Okay, now in this section we'll be uh, continuing with our uh, trunking protocols, trunking concepts where we have seen trunking is a method of allowing the multiple VLAN traffic to go on the same link. So even though it is coming from different VLAN, but the trunk link is going to ensure that uh, even though it is carrying VLAN 1, VLAN 2, VLAN 3 traffic, it will differentiate with some separate tag is added. And when it is sending any tag, any information, it is going to add the tag. And once it receives on the other side, it will remove the tag and it will send to the end devices as a normal frame. So that frame tagging is, is a method to ensure that even though they are going on the same link, it differentiates each and every VLAN traffic and also it will notify the remote switch about the VLAN uh, in uh, the VLAN membership to the remote switches and this happens only on the trunk links and this process is done by two protocols initially ISL inter switch link which was a Cisco proprietary protocol uh, no more use it's a legacy method no more supported in most of the Cisco platforms and the major disadvantage with this one is it is going to add 30 bytes of tag uh, which is going to add some extra overhead on the switches to add and remove the tag and also it is a proprietary method of Cisco. So if you're using Cisco, Cisco on both the sides, probably ISL is going to work. Now, in today's networks, ISL is uh, something not more supported, no more supported in most of the Cisco platforms. And even Cisco uses the default uh, trunking protocol as dot one queue. Uh, it's a dot one queue, no, we write like this. It's a standard which works with Cisco as well as non Cisco devices. It supports only Ethernet networks. Anyway, token ring, FDDI networks, they are no more used. So, dot uh, one q only supports Ethernet. And the major advantage is it's a standard and also it's going to add just a four bytes of tag information, which makes, which adds some less overhead on the switches to add or remove the tag. So in today's network, we just use only dot one q Now, if you want this trunking process to happen, like, like if you see here, I got a VLAN 10 users here. Uh, I want to communicate with VLAN 10 users here. If I want these particular devices to talk to each other on different switches, in that case, they should go from the link which is connecting between the switch. That's what we call as trunk link. Now, the trunking will only work when you configure them with a trunk link. Like we need to go to the interface. Let's assume that I'm connecting port number 20. We need to go to the interface F0 by 20. And then we need to give this command called switch port mode trunk. Now, once I give this command, we are saying to the switch that, hello, hello switch, this port number 20 is no more a normal port. It's a trunk port. And it is going to carry all the VLAN traffic. What it's going to do? It's going to carry all the VLAN traffic. It's going to receive the traffic from every VLAN. It can be a broadcast or unicast, and it's going to forward all the VLAN traffic anything coming from VLAN 10 or VLAN 20 like that. And then we, need, we can define which encapsulation you want to use, whether you want to use dot one q or ISL. Now, uh, by default it runs dot one q So if you're practicing this on a packet tracer, this command is not supported in some platforms. But anyway, they use dot one q encapsulation by default. Okay. So let's, let's go and verify in the command line some of the configuration commands. Okay, so let us verify the concept of uh, trunking here. Now in this lab, I actually got some pre-configured topology here. I got two switches, switch one and switch two. And this switch one and switch two are already connecting to port number one and port number two in the VLAN 10. And port number three and four, these two ports are in the VLAN 20. And the same thing on the switch two as well. I got port number one, port number two in the VLAN 10 and port number three and port number four in the VLAN 20. So I got uh, exactly the same thing here. So let, if, you, if you just want to verify, we can go to the command line of the switch here. This is my switch one. If I give show VLAN, you can see port number one and port number two in the VLAN 10. I already configured this. Uh, and port number three and port number four in the VLAN 10. Now you know how to shift the ports. If, if I just want to show you, you just need to say interface range of 0 by 1 to 2, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10, interface with a range F0 by 3 to 4, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20. Done. 
So the same thing, you know, it's already pre-configured. I'm just trying to do the same thing again. So the same thing you have on the switch two as well. If I just show VLAN, you can see port number one and port number two in the VLAN 10 and port number three and four in the VLAN 20. Now if you go to any one of this computer and these computers are already pre-configured with some IP addresses and I'm going to run of the PC IP config and I'll try to ping to 192.168.1.1 the other PC I'm able to get the reply so here I'm trying to communicate with 1.1 and 1.2 these two computers as they are on the same switch and they are in the same VLAN so they can communicate with each other now let me try to ping to 1.3 which is on a different switch uh, now in this scenario I'm trying to ping from 1.2 and I'm trying to ping to 1.3 now in order to communicate they should be on the same VLAN that's something already there in the same VLAN that's not a problem and they should be on the same network they are on the same network but the third condition we need to match is there should be a trunk link configured because if they are on the same switch there is no need of trunk link they can communicate directly but if they are on different switches they should go via the backbone link which is connecting between the switches and unless you configure the trunk link this switch uh, it will not uh, it will not carry the all the VLAN traffic because the default it will be access we need to tell that this link is a trunk link so that's the reason you can see the request timed out it's not going so let's go to the switch now to configure the trunk link now the same thing happens with these two VLAN also VLAN 20 VLAN 20 which is 192.168.2.network so I'm going to connect port number 20 which is connecting between switch 1 and switch 2 here I'm going to say switch port mode trunk now switch port trunk encapsulation command it doesn't work in some of the platforms in, in this packet tracer here so you don't need to worry so just go to switch 2 and configure the same command interface f0 by 20 switch port mode trunk now if you verify, if you want to verify, we can use a command called show interface trunk. So when I give show interface trunk, it sh it's going to tell how many ports you have a trunk ports and what is the mode it is on. That's a manual trunking and what encapsulation we're using dot one cube and the status of that particular trunk link. And the number of VLANs will load. By default, this trunk link will load all the VLAN traffics by default. Okay. And if you try to ping now, after some time now if I try to ping to 1.3 now you can see 1.3 is able to ping to each other so if you want you can go to the some simulation mode in the packet tracer for verifying I can click on this simulation and you can create a new scenario and then you can uh, capture some packets here you can just generate a packet from here to here and you can start forwarding so the switch it goes to the switch and the switch will broadcast and it goes now it is broadcasting first time because because of the mac entries so i'm not really sure about this simulation so but it works fine so if you try to go to this one of the pc that is 2.1 because already we have a trunking here so if you try to ping to the next PC that is 192.168.2.2 which is on the same switch 2.3 and then 2.4 you can communicate so now always remember one thing always uh, whenever we configure anything so always different departments accounts marketing they're on different networks different VLANs different networks as well as different VLANs okay so all the different VLANs should be in different networks so that they should not communicate with each other and also they are in different VLANs so that they should not broadcast each other. So in order to forward the traffic from one VLAN, uh, the same VLAN, same VLAN users if they are on different switches, they should go from trunk link and in order to do that their trunking has to be manually configured with a command called show uh, switchboard mode trunk and we can verify with show interface trunks.